In the news this morning, um, we're going to turn from a vacation nightmare to a coffee lover's dream. Americans drinking more than an average of three cups a day, spending over $13 billion a year. And now a new book called The Coffee Lover's Diet says it could actually help you lose weight. Mara Scavocampo has more on this. Good morning to you, Mara. Hey, guys. Good morning. This could be great news for coffee lovers. This book saying that doing this, just drinking a cup of coffee, could be the best thing you do all day. Adding it won't just make you more alert. It could also wake up your diet, too. Burning fat helping you stay satisfied, even boosting workouts. But is this the right diet for everyone? Well, we hit Joe New York to find out. For coffee connoisseurs, a cup of Joe is no joke. It's a matter of fine taste. Now you say that coffee is the new red wine. Well, it's the new red wine because there are more taste elements in coffee than there are in red wine. Just this tremendous number of aromas. <laughs> But according to Dr. Bob Arnott, who sells coffee on his website, coffee doesn't just smell good, it's good for you too. While studies have shown an association between drinking coffee and lower mortality rates from some diseases, researchers haven't proven that it's the coffee that's causing those health perks. But Dr. Arnott says Java can jumpstart weight loss and recommends adding several cups of coffee to his low calorie balanced diet. First of all, it's going to increase your metabolism a little bit. You know, you'll burn 100 or so more calories with the caffeine. It does help to sort of take fat out and use it during exercise. It does improve the intensity you can exercise at. But Arnott notes some need to take their coffee with a grain of salt. If it makes you stressed, anxious, or sends your heart racing, scale back or switch to decaf. I always tell people, be aware of your caffeine levels and what you can tolerate. Still, for those who can handle it, Arnott says the biggest coffee boost will be to your mood. You're just going to feel great when you're losing weight as opposed to awful. Here's to coffee. To coffee. Cheers. Cheers. Now, Dr. Arnott notes that if you're going to add more coffee to your diet, make sure to skip the cream and sugar, otherwise you'll probably just torpedo your diet. And he also says that we're all drinking coffee wrong, that the correct way to drink coffee is like this. And that sound really rude? I was slurping it. He says by doing that, you add air, then you can taste and smell it better. Lara, I'm going to just keep slurping this. Yeah, please do. Please do. We're going to join you. Join now by ABC's senior medical contributor, Dr. Jen Ashton. So, Jen, you're a nutritionist. I'm just slurping. I was slurping. Cheers to that. Um, the book actually argues that coffee is a good idea for this weight loss program. Agree? Well, it depends. Not so fast. I mean, full disclosure, I'm a huge coffee fan, but when it comes to diet, it's important to remember the evidence clearly shows any diet can work in the short term. The key is maintaining those success, that weight loss after the two year mark. And so if you're talking about drinking black coffee, which basically has no calories, I say bring it on. If you're talking about, you know, mine is like a lot of half and half with yeah. a little coffee, then and then you add some sugar, yeah. you can, as we just heard, definitely have a bowl of ice cream. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. So what are the risks, though, of, of drinking too much coffee? We talk about it. Worth saying again. 100%, because we have to remember caffeine is a drug. It's one of the most widely used drugs in the world. And as such, there, there can be side effects. It can raise your heart rate. It can raise your blood pressure. It can in potentially lead to dehydration, tremor, insomnia, irregular heartbeats. Everyone's going to have a different response mm -hmm. to it. You know, I'm about three or four cups a day. And Wow. Steady as a rock. Yeah. But everyone, everyone's different, and you do have to keep those in mind. Some people who are prone to high blood pressure, let's say, you know, should be careful. Does What about decaf? Where do you weigh in on that? Well, decaf, remember, doesn't have zero caffeine. It has a lot less. It has about between zero and seven milligrams per serving based on, you know, comparative to regular caffeine, much, much less. But any drug, you talk about dose and frequency. So the dose might be less, but if you increase the frequency, you still could be getting a lot of caffeine. All right, all right, I shall say we? Slow Slurp away. Slurp away, Sister. America. <laughs> I love it. I can't even do it, really. I feel so, my mom is scolding me over the TV. We're going to, we're going to cheers.